Hi, this is Group 1's presentation on removal wallet technology and its application on businesses. My name is Adeyemi. <clears throat> I'm trying to record now um, to make group presentation for my for my part. Yeah, firstly, I'm trying to talk about technology distributions, and um, firstly, I would like to talk about the paper currency. The paper currency is easily to be lost. It involves a lot of risks and the innovation is much. Also in technology distribution, I can talk about mobile payments, which involves ship readers, security, smartphones. So we can also talk about mobile wallets, like Squad, like CookTab, Apple, Passbook. Also we can easily touch about digital wallets that involve database, problem like software, credit card or debit card information. Thank you very much. Okay, so enabler, enablers and, and inhibitors of uh, mobile payments. Um, so just a, a couple points here that really, really hit upon why mobile payments um, are going to be the future and we are going to move towards uh, more mobile type payments and less cash. So um, the first point I have is the use of cell phones. So the expansion has begun to more more than just call and text on your phone. Um, so for example, uh, every day um, you, know, you can use your phone to uh, check let's say your credit card statement or or uh, check your stocks, check the Wall Street Journal, uh, read Reddit, um, check your social media, go on eBay and buy something, or Amazon, or check your fantasy football, check the weather, take some pictures. Um, all these are, are things that you can use your phone for. So um, it's becoming more of a tool and utility in your everyday life um, rather than just uh, just to make calls and texts. So um, there's an interesting fact that 50% of people check their phone more than 20 times per day. So um, with that being around them so much, uh, we only anticipate phones being used more and more for mobile payments. Um, companies that use mobile payments, such as PayPal, Square, Visa, have already began integrating mobile payments. So, um, just an example, PayPal and Square have both have record, record profits for themselves, and they continue to grow at a very fast pace because um, these companies are uh, and will be, you know, kind of what. Uh, will be happening in the future as far as uh, less cash. So um, these are all mobile payment companies, or these are mobile payment companies and virtual payment companies uh, rather than with cash. So, and plus uh, a mobile payment is just a much faster payment um, for people that use them. Uh, interesting fact is millennials are using um, less and less cash um, all the time. So 63% use cash sparingly, if at all, um, which our group has decided that uh, we are moving closer to, towards a uh, cashless cashless society. Um, and we, we make the question, will there one day be where um, companies or uh, maybe even small businesses like coffee shops won't even accept cash? Uh, will it be mobile payment or credit card only? Um, so I, we really think that within the next five years or so, more and more of uh, that type of uh, payment you'll, you'll be able to see. And like we talked about, um, eventually some companies won't even take cash. So now we are going to discuss the SWOT analysis for the mobile wallets. So some strengths would be the mobile payments have superior architecture and that is like the actual systems that they're using with the technology. And then there's a vast number of companies and businesses that support this industry such as like PayPal and MasterCard which has the technology and also has a business plan that goes behind the mobile payments. Some weaknesses could be that there's like mobility issues that you need a computer or the technology at the businesses, which could be difficult for small mom and pop shops to have the technology and know how to use it. Another weakness is the history of mobile payments in other countries. Decades ago, they tried to introduce this and it did not work out correctly and it sort of failed. So some people have a bad taste in the mouth with the memory of that and think it could fail around the second time around. But there's also some great opportunities. And one of these is that in the Asian market, there's a lot of success and 
for now and in the future. And this is because they have low uncertainty avoidance and they trust the technology. This is also with cultural dimensions is that you can study them and see which countries would be open to this transition. Some threats is that it could not live up to the high expectations as it could be bugs or hurdles to overcome before it's 100% used everywhere. Another threat is that public worry about the safety and privacy of having your payments online and you could get hacked and your information could get out to other people. So the for future evolution of this technology. In the future, the Asian and UK targets are the strongest supporters of this and probably where it will really take off first. And this is because, as I mentioned, Asia has low uncertainty avoidance and UK has a lot of technology and they're using it in most circumstances. So they're used to it and they know how beneficial it can be. Some issues in the future could be those expensive third party systems are necessary, such as Alipay, to have this. So they need the architecture, they need to buy these systems, and it's expensive. So small businesses could have issues with this. So some improvements to overcome this in the future could be have an independent mobile payment system without having the hardware that I've discussed, whether they can buy it or set it up. Another thing is that an improvement on the mobile payments is that you're going to have all this customer information from every purchase, what they bought, how much, who they are, how much they're willing to spend, and you can have this information for marketing so you can directly market to them and also alter what you have or what you're offering or the prices they're willing to pay to fit the customer's needs. So it's more personalized for them because they have the information from the mobile payments. There's a lot of growth opportunities I think that in general in the next few years as paper currency goes down mobile payments are going to go up and uh, any doubts about safety concerns or privacy will go away and you'll see how much there is to gain from this technology. Amazon recently opened a store in Seattle that involves a form of a mobile wallet by checking in with your phone using your app that that has your Amazon account and credit card attached to it. The customer comes in and every item they put in their cart, the amount that that item is built to your account and can leave without paying at a cash register per se. One of the main reasons is doing this made it more convenient for customers shopping. Some of the convenient factors with this is no lines for the customers. The customers can get in and out quickly without having to take to to uh, have human interaction and customers just need to bring their phone in and not worry about their wallet. Part of the future is less human capital needed like cashiers and Amazon has been working on robots to do the stocking of the shelves which means there could be no employees at these stores. The future implications of this is huge for Amazon and with the mobile wallet can take customer knowledge to the next level. A lot of articles including a very recent one from Forbes discusses how Amazon can know the number of times the customer shops, what they buy, and specific habits of each one. This information will be very valuable and has huge implications for marketing and supply chain management if they can get this new type of mobile wallet into more stores. Disney has a new item as started to implement called Magic Bands, which is a mobile wallet you wear on your wrist. It has your credit card information, but also can tell you information about its parks, such as wait times for rides and what events are happening. Disney also makes it convenient for customers because they don't have to carry cards around and can give valuable information about the human traffic at the park, which will help each customer have an enjoyable trip by doing more than they could before. Same with Amazon, Disney can learn habits of each customer as in what they buy and where they go. Disney can make the Disney experience more enjoyable for each customer because they can learn what places are um, busy at certain times and balance with knowing the habits of each customer can strategically maneuver human traffic by moving attractions, adding events, and other activities to help the customer experience.